Hello guys. So we will continue our discussion on descriptive statistics. This will be part two of descriptive statistics where we will be discussing measure of dispersion. So in my part one, I have discussed about measure of central tendency wherein I have discussed various measures such as mean, median, more weighted mean, trimmed mean, etc. Okay. So in this uh, video, when we are talking about measure of dispersion, we are actually trying to understand how spread is the data across the mean. So everything is concentrated dead on the center of the data okay so what are the measure of dispersions so there are many things so you can call it as range the first one is range the the second one would be variance the third one could be mean absolute deviation mad the fourth one could be standard deviation and the fifth thing is coefficient of variation okay so we will discuss one by one in today's video okay so what is range so range gives us an overall picture about the data how far the minimum and maximum values are so let's say i have data something like 1 2 3 16 1600 okay so these are my data points and I have multiple data points in between. Okay. So the range is difference between min and max. All right. So what is the min? It is 1. What is the max? It is 1600. Right. So what is the difference? So it will be 1 minus 1600. We take the mod of it. So it will be 1599. So this just gives an idea how, how the numbers are varying between min and max. So there are, there could be 1599 numbers between min and max. So that's what this range tells us. So this is what the range is. Again, this range, as we discussed about mean, this range is also sensitive to outliers. Sensitive to outliers. Okay. So uh, what do I mean by this? So let's say we have only small data set. 1, 2, 3, 4 and then 100 so this is our small data set that we have so if we want to compute the range what we'll do it will be min minus max so that will be 1 minus 100 taking the mod the range will be 99 so but do we see any values near to 99 that often no right so there is only one value that is 100 so this is our outlier and this is affecting our range computation okay so this is what range is. It's simple. There is nothing more to discuss on this, right? So then the second thing is variance, right? So what is variance? So variance is average distance of each data point from the mean value. Okay. So what do I mean by that? So let's say I have some mean. Uh, I have the data points one, two, three, four, five. So these are my data points. Okay. What is the mean here? Mean is 3 because it's 15, sum is 15 divided by 5 that will give us the mean of 3. So what is variance? It's the average distance of each data point from the mean. So what do I mean by that? First let me give you the formula. So standard deviation. So let me say standard deviation of a sample. So standard deviation of sample. It is given as summation i is equal to 1 to n x i minus mean sample mean divided by n and this will be squared right so this is our sample sorry this is not standard deviation it is variance okay sorry my mistake so variance of a sample okay so this is sample variance so this x bar here is our sample mean. So let us try to understand what this actually means, right? So what we are doing, we are taking the difference of the data point by its mean. So if you take this particular example here, so 1 minus 3 plus 2 minus 3 plus 3 minus 3 plus 4 minus 3 plus 5 minus 3. So this is the 
numerator part here divided by n what is n it is 5 we have 5 elements and what we are doing we are taking the square here we have this square here right so what will be the output minus 2 square 4 minus 1 square 1 0 1 4 divided by 5 so it will be 5 plus 5 10 by 5 so our variance is 2 okay so why we have square here why we are taking squared distance between the data point and the mean so the answer is here itself so if you take 1 minus 3 it is minus 2 right and 5 minus 3 it is plus 2 so in this case these two things would get cancelled each other right so in the end we may be at a situation where we get zero as our answer final answer which is not true so in order to avoid these type of situations we will just square the distance between the data points and the mean okay and then we take the average this is called as variance this is variance of a sample and similarly we have variance of a population entire population represented as sigma square okay and the formula it's same instead of small n we will represent it as capital n x i minus instead of x bar it will be a population mean divided by n so this is our uh, variance of a population okay so again i don't think we need any explanation in this regard because i already explained it here in case of sample variance right so uh, there are there is a different formula for sample variance if you look at the internet it will be n minus 1 so why this is n minus 1 it's altogether a complete story i will cover it as we progress in our daily sessions okay so for now i hope you have understood what variance is so it's actually it actually tells us how each data point is spread across that particular mean value okay so this is about variance so you can ask whether this variance is sensitive to outliers yes it is very sensitive in fact it is very 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 highly sensitive so why because we are taking the squared value of the difference between data point and the mean so just imagine if we have a very large outlier uh, in this example 1 2 3 4 and we have 100 the mean would get shifted nearly towards 16 we have seen this in our previous video right so in earlier mean was 3 but with some large number outlier it will drastically change the mean value will drastically change so since this change drastically the difference will also affect largely so instead of 1 minus 3 it will be 1 minus 16 2 minus 3 it will be 2 minus 16 right so this is how the number varies and on top of that we are squaring them so this will have very very adverse effect so outliers will have very adverse effect on calculating the variance okay so this thing you have to remember then there is something called as mean absolute deviation mean absolute deviation so the short form is m a d so what it is it's the summation i equal to 1 to n mod of x i minus x bar divided by n so it's similar to variance but we are not taking square but instead of square we are taking the mod operation so it's just a difference it's not subtracting it's the difference so what is the difference between subtraction and difference so if we have two numbers one and two if we want to compute the if we want to subtract one from two it will be one minus two two from one one minus two right so it will be minus one so if we are talking about the difference or this mod operation here so it will be one minus two we are doing away with this sign we are always getting the positive value so this is what this mod operation does and hence we are not using this square here okay so this is about mean absolute deviation again this is also sensitive to outliers but not that much as much of variance okay so hope it is clear now we will talk about standard deviation so what is standard deviation it's just a square root of variance so variance so do not uh, do not lose interest when i am trying to work out some mathematical uh, equations because statistics is very verbose 
if we go on explaining each and everything in a plain english it will it will take a lot of time and uh, you will end up forgetting what we were talking earlier in the sentence okay so it's very verbose so in order to simplify that i am trying to give you some examples and then try to explain the equations also okay so just bear with me with this so what what is the standard deviation and why we need it so you know that variance cannot be understood with the unit also right so what is variance it is square of something right so let's say if we have a column called as height and if we take the variance of this column the unit of that variance right so variance of height or variance of height will be so if we are representing height in centimeters it will be centimeter squared the unit will be centimeter squared so what does this mean right so we will not be able to understand it exactly so in order to do away with this difficulty what we have come up with we have come up with standard deviation which is just square root of the variance so what happens so if you consider about the unit here so the same example centimeter square we are taking the square root the unit will be same as that of the variable that we have so that we can easily explain what this standard deviation is with the help of the unit also okay so let's say uh, if the variance of a column height is around 20 centimeters 20 centimeters square you cannot explain it clearly and people will often ask what is this 20 centimeters square we do not know right so what we do we take the square root of 20 centimeters square so this will be cancelled and square root of 20 so for the sake of understanding let's take it as 25 and 25 square root is 5 it will be 5 centimeters so the standard deviation of height will be 5 centimeters whereas the variance was 25 centimeters square so this tells us that on an average the data for the column height is spread across 5 centimeters 5 units from the mean value okay so this is what we can explain with respect to standard deviation right now coming to coefficient of variation coefficient of variation so what it is so this is actually used to compare two different things right so i'll just write it used to this will be used to compare two different things okay so if we let's say we want to compare height and weight columns height and weight columns and we want to analyze which column varies largely or which column has more variance or stand more variance okay so that's what we have to analyze between these two columns so what's the formula for this it will be standard deviation divided by mean expressed in terms of percentage so if you just carefully look at this formula this will be unitless why why this is unitless so this is standard deviation square root of variance okay so let's talk about height now so if we are computing coefficient of variation for height so let's say uh, in our example we have taken standard deviation as 5 centimeters right so coefficient of variation would be 5 centimeters divided by mean let's say mean value is somewhere around uh, mean height uh, let, for the sake of understanding let's take it as some 30 centimeters as our mean value so if we divide it the units would get cancelled so this is unitless right so this coefficient of variance is unitless hope this is clear so similarly we can compute the coefficient of variance for another column in this case weights so what we'll do we'll take the standard deviation of weights and then divide by the mean weights and express it as percentage okay so th this case 1 by 6 into 100 so it will be 6 percent and if we take the weight let's say we get the coefficient of variance as 10 percent so among these two weight will vary largely relative to the height column so this is what we can inform from coefficient of variance since it is unitless it will help us to compare two different things 
at a time okay so this is about coefficient of variation so hope you guys have understood these five things so as we progress we will start to discuss things in more depth so that's it for this video if you guys have any questions please reach out to me in comment section so if you are liking the content please give it a thumbs up and share it across your peers so that they will also be benefited okay so please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed till we see in the next video happy learning bye bye